Well, it's another bone chilling day here at Redgate Farm, but it's nice and toasty inside because I have a raging fire. So why isn't there any smoke coming out of my chimney? Let's find out. Across the United States, counties, cities, and municipalities are banning wood-burning stoves and fireplaces in new construction. Also, the EPA has really cracked down and heavily regulated the new build of wood-burning stoves. They've made them far more complex and a lot more expensive. Now, you'd think for a guy who's heated his house with wood for the last 15 years would be opposed to that. That's not necessarily true. I completely understand why they're doing that, and we're going to talk about that today. So when I drive around and I see chimneys belching out white, brown, and black smoke, I cringe. Because I know three things are happening. First of all, they're polluting the environment. All of that smoke has particulates in it. It has toxins in it that it decrease the air quality and exacerbate issues like asthma, emphysema, and respiratory conditions. And it also causes respiratory conditions in those of us who are healthy. Secondly, I know that that chimney where the smoke is coming out of is full of soot and creosote. And there are thousands of chimney fires every year that destroy homes and kill people. It's a safety hazard. Thirdly, I know that they are burning way more wood than they need to. You see, about 60% of the energy of the log is actually released in the gases and the particulates that leave the log when it's burning. If you don't burn those, you're going to burn more than twice the amount of wood than you need to. For example, this 2,000 square foot house, I use less than two cords per year. And people are somewhat amazed by that. So let's break it down into the simple components. First of all, we start with wood. Now, how does this wood burn? Well, first of all, when it begins to heat up, it's going to release or boil out the water that's in the wood. If you remember from chemistry class, the water does not increase in temperature until it's all boiled out. It's called the latent heat of fusion. So it takes a lot of energy to boil the moisture out of this wood. If you look in your fire and you see water boiling out the end of it, you didn't dry your wood good enough, okay? It takes a lot of energy for that to happen. In the meantime, all those gases are leaving this wood, but it's not heating up. Once the wood's out of it, then it begins to heat up more and you'll see some smoke, okay? Once it gets hotter than that, those particulates and gases that are leaving begin to glow. That's the first time that you see an actual flame is when the things that are leaving the wood are actually beginning to glow hot, red hot, and then orange, then yellow, then clear, and then if you get really hot, it could turn blue, okay? So the color of the flame is telling you the temperature as it leaves. And at a certain temperature, we have what's called secondary combustion. The things that are leaving, 60% of the energy of the log are leaving the log. And if they're hot enough, they too will burn and you will get all of the energy out of that log. That's what we're looking for. We know it's critical to burn dry wood in the stove, but what is dry wood? Well, online you'll find things that say 12 to 15 percent. You need your wood to be seasoned. But in the end, you actually should test your wood. And you can get one of these devices online. In fact, our storefront has them. You can buy them on Amazon, all sorts of places. It's basically, it tests the moisture content of wood. So let's take a look at it on some wood that's been sitting on my stack. I'm going to turn it on here and it says about 7.5%, but that is the surface of the wood. You're probably wondering why I'm by the chop saw because I wanna know the moisture content inside the log. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half and measure it inside. That's about 14.3. This is a good piece of wood. But if I had a fresh piece of wood, it could very well be 10 or 12 on the outside and about 20 to 25 on the inside. 
It's really the only way to know that your wood is dry to get a wood moisture tester. So I wanna get a good look at the firebox before I start burning. Let's start with the glass. First of all, this has been burning four or five months and this has not been cleaned at all. And you can see that the glass is clear. Now, there is some white ash right there. There's some white ash on the inside and white ash on the bottom and gray or white on the walls. That's very important to note that color and we'll talk about that later. Also, because I can't get in there later when it's burning, Notice the holes in these uh, stainless steel plates on the side. Those holes are important. Those are to allow air to get in there. Now, I'm going to go up top where the gases go, but notice again, a lot of white, a lot of gray, all the way through the stove, very little black. As I said previously, this glass has not been cleaned the entire burn season, and it's just got ash on it. But I want to take that ash off because when I film, I want to be able to see through the window. I want you to be able to see the firebox a lot better. So I'll just get a paper towel. I'll make it wet. I'll dip it in the ash here. Just dip it in a little bit of ash. And I can just gently wipe it off. I always start by thoroughly cleaning the firebox uh, because I want good airflow in there. So this is kind of a nice system here. I just shovel it back and forth. It falls right into the ash tray down below. When we start the fire, we want the fire to light and get up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. So I've seen people open the door and sit there and throw pieces of paper in there. You don't want this door open. I love the fact that this one has such a big window because I can light it shut the door and just make sure it lights. You want enough wood in there to get that box up above a thousand degrees Fahrenheit before you have to open it again and put another piece of wood in there. So I start with very small kindling first. This is yellow poplar. It dries very fast, it's very light. It lights really well and it burns really fast. Great for starting a fire, not so great for sustaining a fire. So I've got a little bit of packing paper in the bottom there, not a whole lot. You shouldn't need a whole lot if you've got good dry wood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack this wood kind of alternating because I want layers of wood. I finished loading. I've started with tulip on the bottom and a bigger piece of tulip here. That will light and uh, give me some BTUs to actually light the red oak and the hickory that's on the very top. That red oak and hickory is very dense, has a high, very high BTUs. And once the fire gets very hot, that has a lot of energy there. So then I can open the door and put another piece in. When I start the fire, I only use one match. I light it and I quickly shut the door. I don't want any cold air going in there, cooling things off. I want it hot. The other thing is I have all the air fully opened. So it feeds it and fires it up quickly. This is just after starting the fire. As you can see, it's not hot enough to completely combust the gases. Therefore, some of those unburnt gases are making it out of the chimney. And that's where you get soot, and that's why the top of the chimney is black. When this fire heats up, that will completely disappear. You will see nothing coming out of the top. Okay, we are now eight minutes into this fire. Now, normally I wouldn't open the door this early because I want it to heat up more in there, but I'm going to open it to show you in the primary burning process, you form a lot of carbon. And this carbon actually uh, adheres to the walls, adheres to the glass, adheres to the chimney, and you actually have black smoke. So let's open it up and take a look. First, you see that spot right there on the window. Second, if you look at the walls, you'll see some black marks up the side. Essentially, we want this fire to get hot enough that that all turns white. Now, if you look in the bottom, the logs are turning to coals and you see the white around those. Boy, it's hot, I get it back. But the top logs are still black, indicating that they're not fully combusting. You also see some smoke coming off the end of that log. So we need it to get hotter in there. Let's put a few logs in and heat it up. 
Remember the holes on the side that I pointed out early? Now you see flames actually coming out of those holes. What's happening is now the walls are hot enough that as those gases come out of those holes, they're actually combusting. We are getting into secondary combustion at this time. So the firebox is heating up probably uh, well over a thousand degrees now, uh, but there is still some carbon being deposited because some of those gases are escaping without fully combusting. We are about 15 minutes into this fire and we're seeing the process continue. This little black spot here is now burning off. Essentially, it will burn that carbon right off and turn it clear again, or at least white with ash. The bottom is fully into complete combustion and some of the flames are turning clear down there. I have seen some blue flames. Still got a lot of things coming out those side holes up top, which means that in the upper area, we still need heat up some more in order to turn everything into clear exhaust gases. All right, we are just over 20 minutes into the fire and there is absolutely nothing coming out of the top that we can see. Now, without running outside every time to see whether I got complete combustion, let's go inside and determine what we can see inside the box that will let us know that we have complete combustion. Now we're back inside and let's look at the signs of complete combustion. First of all, that black spot is almost completely burned off the window. Second of all, if you look at the side walls, they're turning from black back to that white ash. I also see blue flames coming out the side. It's hard for you to see on the camera, but some of those holes have actually blue flames emanating from them. It's over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. This left side is almost completely black to white ash. So essentially, once the firebox begins to clean itself up, that means that you have complete combustion and the temperature inside there is perfect. Now we've achieved our complete combustion in there and what are we gonna do with it? Well, we're gonna throw an ice cube in the middle of it. We're gonna open this door and cool everything down. Essentially, this is about 70 degrees and it has some moisture in it. So it has to boil off the moisture in the middle of it and it has to heat this up to about 1500 degrees. Like I said, it's like throwing an ice cube in there. So when you do that, you're going to create some incomplete burning and some gases and probably see a little smoke coming out of the top. So what I do is I don't throw a whole bunch in at one time because it will cool it way down and you don't want that to happen. The other thing I do sometimes is I'll take these little sticks and throw them underneath this log. What that does is it keeps it off the pile a little bit so air can flow around it and heat it up a little bit quicker. So. Let's do that. Let's go outside and see if we see some black smoke coming out again. There's no smoke coming out at all because now the entire chamber is hot enough that even though it's a new log, the heat reflected back is completely combusting all the gases. And I've also diverted the air, the exhaust to go actually around the oven chamber which gives it a lot more time to completely burn the gases. So even when we add just a little bit of wood, you're not gonna see any smoke. Inside the fire chamber, when you put a new log in, you'll see uh, flames all over the place. Flames coming out of the side walls and all around because when that log is heating up, it's outgassing. Essentially, it's spewing gases into that firebox. And if it's hot enough, those gases will light. And as you can see, as it's outgassing, all those gases are lighting up. Looking at the bottom of the fire, you see the hottest portion. Uh, you see a bright glowing orange, and you really, in the bottom where those coals are, you don't see any flames. Well, there's flames there, but they're clear because they're so hot. The logs down there have a white ash on the outside, which essentially means that it's so hot that there's no time for that black carbon to appear because it automatically combines with the oxygen and departs through the chimney. So white logs are good and orange coals with uh, no flame in the bottom. That's very good. All right, let's talk a little bit about how much heat this can actually produce. Uh, it's designed to be around 85,000 BTUs. 
It's a very, very tiny firebox because it's part of a wood cook stove. I woke up this morning and it was in the lower 40s, upper 30s Fahrenheit last night. So the house got down to 66. I've only run this now for 45 minutes and the house is now up to 72 degrees. When you completely burn, especially when you use these very dense woods like red oak, white oak, and hickory, which is what I got going in there, uh, you produce a tremendous amount of heat. Now what about those first 20 minutes when it wasn't completely combusting? Well, it not only heats up the firebox, it has to heat up a tremendous amount of thermal mass. So heat up all this cast iron and steel and the soapstone on the outside, so it takes a little while for all that to heat up. So depending on the size of your stove, it takes a little bit to get all that thermal mass up to temperature. But once it's up there, it is belching out a tremendous amount of heat right now. All right, here is complete combustion. The window is completely clean back to where we had it before we started this fire. And I'm gonna open it, bad thing to do, it lets in cold air, but I want to show you the fire itself, okay? Completely white walls, completely white walls. There is no carbon developing there. You'll see those coals down there. Some of those have blue flames. There's actually blue flames coming off the log. Okay, extremely hot temperature right there. And we can throw a log in now and it's going to light. So this is the ideal burn right here. Once that firebox gets up to about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit or 600 degrees Celsius, the secondary gases are completely combusted and combined with oxygen. And there's only two things that come out of the chimney. That's carbon dioxide and water. Both of those are colorless and odorless. So you see nothing and you smell nothing. So let's talk about airflow. When you're starting the fire and you're trying to heat that box up to operating temperature, you want full airflow. Now, most of the modern stoves and even some of the older ones have a preheating design. In other words, before that air, that cold air gets into the firebox and creates a huge air conditioner in there, it actually runs it through some channels to heat it, and then it goes in there. Once you see that the logs are white on the outside or glowing, and you have complete combustion, nice clean walls and clean glass, then you can turn that airflow down, okay? Because it'll have just enough air to get in there and keep that burning, but it's not going to consume your logs super fast. The worst thing you can do is what I used to do up north before I knew about all this. Uh, at night when I'd go to bed, I'd throw a whole bunch of logs in there and I'd shut off all the air. Well, they did smolder through the night and it was still warm in the morning, but man, did I waste a bunch of wood and create a bunch of creosote in the chimney because it wasn't up to operating temperature. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. Keep it hot and then you can turn down the air and you'll see a nice bed of coals and, and right on the top, you'll see this blue flame trickling upwards. It's a beautiful sight. Well, I wanna finish with a word of caution here. You really need to control that airflow because if you leave it open, once you get to operating temperature, you can actually over fire your stove which can cause damage, permanent damage, and it can also cause a fire. You need to know the limits of your particular stove. The temperatures I was talking about were flame temperatures and exhaust gas temperatures, not surface temperatures. And these little thermometers are very handy to put on the surface to make sure you don't overfire your stove. Now, this particular one doesn't work for mine because it's a modern stainless steel wood cook stove with a water jacket, and it can actually operate at higher surface temperatures because I have a cooktop. But they have thermometers for every type of stove, and you really ought to follow the manufacturer's suggested temperature limits of each stove. Well, thanks again for watching. Leave a comment. We love to read them. We learn from them. And uh, we can answer any questions you have about this particular one. And if not, we'll see you next time. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so.